Good morning. A um, couple years ago, before I turned 50, my boy, Alan, who was a junior at UVA, he called me, he says, Mom, come to the farm market at Charlottesville downtown. So I came, and then I saw people carrying the tin bag, and they wear the sunglasses, has tin, they have the cap with tin. I thought to myself, I said, whoa, I raised a really cool boy. He is creative, he's sweet, and he's doing something surprise. And then time go on, 15 minutes later, I figured it was a telecommunication company <laughs> called T. <laughs> I should have registered the name T. <laughs> so Charlottesville, I might come here to run for mayor one day. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. So for most, the American dream is a picture of a house with two-car garage on a cul-de-sac. For me, it has been a flag. To be more specific, it is this flag, the pineapple flag. That was my mom with our daughter Emily on her lap. To, to share with you the story of how I came to America and it started Evergreen Enterprises, I have to take you back to 1920. This is my grandfather. So he was the first in his family that went to college, get an education. Then in 1926, he had the opportunity to come to America, to Northwestern University, to get his uh, master's degree in economics. So after sailing on a ship for almost a month, he arrived in Chicago. Can you imagine the challenges, difficulty he had to overcome being a first Chinese student coming to America back in the 20s? So a couple years later, he successfully completed his study, got his master's degree, then he decided went back to China to serve the government. So with his education and his hard work, he rose very quickly and became one of the youngest deputy finance minister. So he was the first established accounting principle uh, and the economic principle for the government. So with his success, he built this family compound in the capital city of Nanjing. And so his wife and six children live with him there. Being a very generous, kind person, my, my grandfather took in extended family members, friends as well. At one point, there were over 40 people living in this family compound. Then, uh, 1949, communists took over China. Um, my grandfather lost everything. He made a decision not to leave to Taiwan, so he lost his uh, house, his possession, his job. And when Cultural Revolution came and his fate turned worse, he was put in a labor camp. And when he was eventually released, he's no longer the same person and died shortly after. But one of the family that benefited from my grandfather's generosity in the early days in the family compound, they made their way eventually to America. So one distant cousin, Christina, she grew up, remember her mother telling her the story of how nice my grandfather was to her family. The opportunity to do something to nice to our family finally came in the mid-1980s when China opened its door to the rest of the world. So Christina contacted my mom and offered the opportunity to sponsor me to transfer to a college in Norfolk, Virginia, or Dominion University. Back in the 80s, you know, a one-way airline ticket cost $800, and my parents' combined annual income would take five, six years of that to pay for a ticket. No family had that kind of saving. So my grandmother, she called a family meeting, asked all her children for the extra cash they had, and got me that ticket. So being 19, 
at the airport for the first time get on an airplane, you know, tears just ran down on my cheek. I grew up as a tomboy, hardly cry. And, you know, one, it's really hard to say goodbye to my family. I don't know when I'm going to see them again. And it's also really hard to say goodbye to my college sweetheart, Frank. We just start dating. <laughs> and uh, more importantly, you know, I cried because I felt the burden on my shoulder. I know I'm getting on the plane, flying across 7,000 miles, going to a new place with the hope and the burden of multi-generation of my family. I have to make it work. There was no Google back then, so I didn't know where Norfolk, Virginia is. <laughs> so here is my, me, a picture of the first day arrived in Norfolk at the Old Dominion University campus. <clears throat> so the first couple years, I immersed myself in learning a completely new culture, learning the language, working hard, getting grades. <clears throat> and, but also, I was just awed by the abundance of material goods here. Growing up in uh, ration, the food the country in China, coming here, find out you know, how inexpensive banana was. So, you know, Frank and I, I would, we were, went through three pounds of banana and a gallon of ice cream every other day, <laughs> and a big pork chop like that. So we were happy. And um, a year later, Frank was able to come to join me. So two of us, we have a very simple goal. First, we want to graduate, and then we want to get a job, want to save enough money, and to start a family. Then a couple years later, my parents came to Richmond, reunited with us. My dad was a civil engineer, and my mom was a college professor. So with the language barrier and in the age was no longer on their side, it would be difficult for them to do the similar profession as coming to America. So while Frank, James, and I were busy with our daytime job at night, we tried to figure out what we can do to help my parents be independent to start a new life in America. So one day at the dinner table, uh, Frank mentioned that he sold insurance policy to a couple who were making flags and have no idea what flag is, but that idea intrigued me. So eventually, I was able to locate the flag shop and convince the owner to give me a try. So I walked away with an order for 400 flags. <laughs> well, thanks to the success of Frank's insurance career and his uh, respectable year-end bonus, I bought myself a ticket and went back to China and used that money, also set up a small production line with a special sewing machine. So after weeks of hard work, came back, tried to deliver those flags to the flag shop, and then find out that lady, she is not in the position to pay for it. So <laughs> at the, the family dinner table, you figure we've solved a lot of problems at dinner table. <laughs> and my brother James mentioned that he said, well, state fairground is going on. People selling products there. Maybe we should go for a try. So without really knowing what to expect, we went ahead and ran the booth set up with PVC pipe and hung those four designs up. Customer love our product. They love the quality, they love the price point, they love the design. But everybody was asking, that's all you have, just four designs? We said, well, we will come back with more designs. So within a month, we developed 100 designs. So that is a aha moment for us. Evergreen was born in 1993 in our garage, and soon after, Frank, James quit their job along with me, and with my parents, we started Evergreen Enterprises. But then we were concerned that flag was just going to be a fad, not going to have staying power. So what are we going to do next? And that led us to High Point Furniture Show. So we made three prototypes of a Thai table and brought to the show at the uh, 
very corner at the turn of an escalator base. Waited a couple days at the show, no customer. Last day, two ladies in black suits walk by, and one of them look at uh, the table and ask if we have 3,000 of them. <laughs> Frank and I look at each other, our face turned red, our heart was pounding. Other than this prototype, we have nothing. But innately, we knew that is an opportunity we should seize. So we told them, we say, yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> the, the lady pulled out a purchase order, and it has TJ Maxx written on it. We knew that was a big account. So for the next 60 days, we rallied everyone we know in Richmond, <laughs> family, friends. We made a makeshift assembly line making tables and were able to deliver. Looking back that day, I think that's a make or break moment, and I'm glad we took the chance and said yes to opportunity. So for the next 10 years, we were busy growing evergreen enterprises and started hiring people, now renting warehouses, hiring executives. And in 2005, uh, Frank, along with uh, John Toller, uh, lead the most important milestone in our company history by establishing a direct sales force. So within a couple years, we built 150 dedicated sales people team to cover all 50 states of the United States. And uh, so over a period of 10 years, we expand the product to over 12,000 SKU with five different brands and our wonderful salespeople, the best in the home garden industry, some of them are here. They're covering over 7,000 independent uh, gift shops and the garden centers. And here's a snapshot of all the wonderful products we designed. And then in 2010, we had the opportunity to acquire a well-loved Virginia brand, Plow on the Hearth, and it's headquartered about 25 miles north from here. And Plow on the Hearth is a catalog company, and it is the largest employer in the rural Madison County. So we jumped from B2B to B2C. We have to learn how to build a website. We have to learn big data, understand the consumer, there's so many different systems we have to figure out how to connect. And most importantly, we have to learn how to you know, build a brand, speaking to end consumer. It has been a very rewarding journey. We have a dedicated people there. And uh, when you have time, come visit us. And we have a store just uh, two miles from here. <laughs> so. While we were building Evergreen Enterprise and in Plow and Hearts, it's been a wonderful business journey. It also has been a very interesting cultural journey to learn how to be American. I remember one day I got a call from the factory uh, manager, and he said, Team, I ran out of the red fabric for the Santa hat. I only have orange. Can I substitute? I say, Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> A couple years later, I still have those flags. Couldn't even <laughs> give it away. <laughs> and then Frank and I was working in a Chinese restaurant in Norfolk and uh, tried to save money for tuition. And a customer asked Frank for Dr. Pepper. He thought the customer was sick, so he ran as hard as he can to the kitchen, find the owner, and ask, where's Dr. Pepper? <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, it's been a really wonderful journey for me, for my family, for all the Evergreen Plow Hearts people. And we were growing the business, raising two wonderful kids. And, um, you know, we also had the opportunity to be mentor and investor in a lot of startup company. All those that's listed here were based right here in central Virginia. And uh, one of them actually went IPO last year. <laughs> it was the King Sales Insurance, so doing very well. So um, 
as being so fortunate that I have to come to America and come to this wonderful community, Central Virginia, that I think we're going to be continue figure out a way to growing jobs deeply rooted in this gorgeous, gorgeous place. Uh, there are days, you know, I still pinch myself, try to see if this is all real. And um, it is real, you know. The, I think being an entrepreneur, being a business, I really learned the most important thing is being creative, being good problem solver. And as long as you keep working at it, you're going to find a solution sooner or later. <clears throat> I know at the Tom Tom Festival, all of you come here for looking for cool startup ideas, looking for sexy concepts. And you might wonder what this flat lady got to do here. <laughs> you know, I think my story really demonstrates that no matter how big or small the idea is, or how mainstream or niche your product is going to be, as long as you're extremely passionate, you have the support of your family, the community, and you're financially prudent, and you're willing to keep work at it, sooner or later, you're going to have a successful business. Flag might not be the coolest product, but this journey has to be pretty cool. It took us to many cool places around the world as well. You know, there's uh, not a single day that I don't think of my grandfather. You know, his generosity, his paying forward is what gave me the opportunity to come to America. And my love, commitment to my family made me start Evergreen Enterprises. So I think our love and the commitment to Virginia, to this wonderful country, to, is going to continue making me to explore the future opportunity. I don't know exactly what future endeavor going to be or opportunity going to be, but I know I'm going to say yes. <laughs> say yes with you and then figure out later. <laughs> Thank you all. Appreciate it.